I've got it. I was just wondering if I, if I didn't. us today. We especially welcome all those who are joining us from your home. We are pleased that you are here with us in spirit. We respectfully ask that all cell phones be Beginning today, we have restored our 9 a.m. mass. Our weekend mass schedule is 5.30 p.m. on Saturday evening or afternoon, and on Sunday morning, masses will be said or celebrated and we will continue to live stream the 11 a.m. Mass. Today we are celebrating the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time. I am Ed Patton. Our leader of song is Ricky is our principal celebrant. On leaving church today, the volunteers in sanitizing the church. For prep families who have not already done so, we ask that the 2020-2020 we can order the necessary books for the coming school year. The form can be found on the Thank you. On Thursday evening at the Blessed Sacrament here in our church, all parishioners are invited to come and pray, for, especially for vocations. A group of seminarians who are participating in the Biking for Vocations program, which is being hosted. Bishop John McIntyre and Bishop On Friday morning, Bishop John McIntyre and Bishop for our daily 9.30 a.m. Mass. The Pot of Gold Jackpot Prize is $70,000. The next drawing will be on Monday evening at 7 p.m. or also at the rectory. Now please which can be found on page Father, for your people. 
Fill your church with the spirit of courage and love. Raise up the servants of the gospel. Bless our archdiocese with numerous vocations to the sacred priesthood. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our entrance hymn is Table of Plenty, found on page three of the Parish Bulletin. To the feast of heaven and earth, come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. Oh, come and sit at my table where saints and sinners are friends. I wait to welcome the lost and lonely to share the cup of my love. Come to the of heaven and earth, come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. Oh, come and eat without money, come to drink without pride. My feast of gladness will feed your spirit with faith and fullness of life. Come to the feast of heaven and earth, come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God will provide for all that we need. If we ever sometimes feel that we're going through something and he hasn't helped us, I'll tell you one thing I've always noticed, almost always, I didn't ask. And so we really do need to call to mind what we need as we come into his presence, ask him for that for ourselves and for those we love, as well as the coming into his presence to praise him and thank him for his goodness. Brothers and sisters, let's acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and in what I've failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me and you shall eat well you shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen that you may have life. I will renew you with the everlasting covenant that benefits assured to David. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. works. 
The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. The hand of the Lord feeds us, he answers all our A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword? No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Gospel according to Matthew. To you, Lord. When Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it's already late. Dismiss the crowds so that they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, There's no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, Five loaves and two fish are all we have here. Then he said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish. And looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied. And they picked up the fragments left over, 12 wicker baskets full. Those who ate, were about 5,000 men, not counting women and children. The 
Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's Gospel is a scene that I've always loved to go through in my imagination, wondering what it must have been like to be there that day, especially to be hungry, both in spirit and in body, and listening to the eternal word being preached by the Son of God and seeing his miracles, especially this miracle of the multiplication of the loaves. You know, it's a poignant detail that we could easily miss that this gospel begins by telling us this was a moment when Jesus really wanted to be alone in his Father's presence, especially because he had just heard the tragic news of the murder of St. John the Baptist by the same Herod who was going to play a part later in the events surrounding his own crucifixion. But we see that the crowds were so spiritually hungry and they were following him on foot, almost in desperation, and he was moved with pity for them. So even though his human energies were spent, he drew on a power within himself that was not from this world. And he not only received the crowds, but he drew from that power to heal many of them who were sick. But it was then, as the day was drawing to a close and people who had followed him, had followed him with such eagerness that they had neglected even to get food for themselves. You can still see the place where this happened today, that place is commemorated by a church. And it's a good walk away from the closest town, Capernaum. And there was no food in that place, at least not very much. And there was this miracle that he worked and showed even more clearly than before who he was and is. He took into his hands the little bit of food that there was among them. And as he handed that food to his disciples to feed the multitude, it's no exaggeration to say what happened there right in front of the eyes of the multitude was the same thing that happened on, that, on the day of creation. Right there before the eyes of everyone who was looking on, Almighty God, the hands of the hand of, of the man of Nazareth proved to be nothing less than the hands of the same Almighty God who could bring forth something where there had been nothing. Order where there had been chaos. Light where there had been only darkness. Up until that moment, he had been a God who could only be known by his people invisibly beneath the veil of his divine mystery. But in Jesus, he had become a God who had freely chosen to be born of a human woman so that he could be seen in the flesh and heard by human ears and whose human touch could bring healing to anyone who came to him in trust. That moment of this drama was captured beautifully, I think, in, in, by Franco Zeffirelli in his 1977 masterpiece movie presentation, Jesus of Nazareth. I remembered it as I was preparing the homily, and, I, and even though I didn't have time to watch all six hours of it, I pulled it up on Amazon Prime and fast-forwarded to the scene where Jesus, who's been teaching the hungry crowds, now feeds them this, with this miraculous multiplication of the loaves and fishes. And you can see the excitement rippling through the crowds as they realize that this is the man. This man is clearly the one that they had been waiting for to bring them salvation. He was the one who was even greater than Moses who had fed them with bread from heaven, who would not only show them how they should live, but free them from their guilt when they hadn't lived as they should. But the most dramatic moment of the scene is when the same woman who had been caught in adultery but then had been forgiven by the mercy of Jesus 
now stood there in that crowd where she, like everyone else, had been spellbound by his words, and now held in, his, in her hands and ate from the piece of bread in her hand that Jesus had brought into being out of nothing. And as she looked at that bread, she broke down in tears. At the realization, really, I imagine, that even what he had done with that bread that was in her hands paled in significance against what he had done with her poor soul that had been wearied by life and battered by sin. And not only had he fed her hungry stomach, but he had fed her soul that had been starved for love and for meaning. And something far greater than creating a piece of bread out of nothing, he had literally recreated her soul to be as fresh and pure again as the day that she'd been born. And even more pure than that, because now she was reborn into a life that flows from God's own life, a life that will never end. The reason that moment can touch us so deeply is that the same power in Jesus that could bring forth something out of nothing is a power that suffering and death could not conquer. So he not only rose from the grave after the third day, on the third day after his death, he lives to come into our presence and to feed us and make us new, just as he did for the apostles and to the crowds who listened and to that woman whose sin he had forgiven. Though he had all the richness of the kingship of heaven at the right hand of the eternal Father, he became poor for our sakes so that the heavenly riches that he laid down might be poured out on us as food and as light and as medicine for our souls. When we read the story of this same event of the multiplication of the loaves as it's recorded in the Gospel of John, we see that after this great miracle, Jesus had to withdraw in secret because it says they were going to come and carry him off and make him king. They were obviously thinking, if he can feed people with a miracle like this, we'll have an invincible food supply. If, if he can do this with bread, imagine what he could do with an army in the field. If he can heal like this, there's no need for doctors or hospitals. You know, according to the logic of this world, all that made sense. But really, they were failing totally to understand what all this meant, to, to realize that Jesus had come into this world to give us not those earthly things that pass away, but something infinitely more valuable than perishable food or military power or healing of physical wounds or diseases. What he wants to do for each one of us is nothing less than to create us anew, to forgive our sins and make us children of his eternal Father who live forever. And yet, as the prophet Isaiah was already saying, we go instead so often looking for the food that doesn't satisfy our deepest hunger, for the water that doesn't really quench the thirst of our souls thinking that the things of this world that we want more and more of can ever satisfy us, and wanting the, uh, the healing that only delays the death that will eventually overtake our bodies. But he wants to give us so much more, and he does give us so much more if we'll receive it from him. That bread that the woman of Galilee broke down in tears to see in her hands was something amazing and wonderful. But it was only a foreshadowing of the more wonderful bread of life that Jesus is offering us here and now, his very self, under the forms of bread and wine. It's such an amazing gift. You know, if we ever wonder why Jesus comes to us in a form that we can't see visibly as the disciples did that day, I think he has an answer for us. I don't want to be close enough to you that you can see me outside. I want to be close enough to you that I'm within you. You, can, you can't see what's inside of you. That's where I want to live. You, want, you receive me? Then look in the mirror. That's the face 
that I've now made my own. And those are the eyes that I want to use to look out on the world. And those are the hands in front of you that you have that I want to do my work in the world. I want to become part of you. That's why I give you myself in this, in this form. You know, it is such an amazing gift. We should never take it lightly. There might even be times. There might even be, it may, might be for some who are here right now. There might be some times when we should say, am I really ready? right now to receive this bread and everything it means? Do I need to go to confession first to put behind me whatever might stand between me and the Lord who's given himself completely to me and wants himself, wants my, me to give myself completely to him? If that's so, then, then it might be so, but it's just a delay. It's not a taking away of the invitation. Jesus will never take away that invitation, and he will always wait for us to be here to receive him worthily, having confessed our sins and wanting to be totally his, because that's what he wants. He'll never take away this invitation, and he, he'll always be there, asking us to take him into our bodies and into our souls and become his presence in the world so that others may be able to find his face in ours, his hands and feet in ours, in his presence where we walk, with his body and his blood within us. If we really realize who it is who wants to feed us with himself, we'll be ready to do what those in that crowd did today. That's to leave behind everything that's less, especially everything that might separate us from his will and become his disciples, that he's recreating in his image to stop feeding on this world's things that never really satisfy and depend instead on the heavenly bread that nourishes us with a life that will never end. Even one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. With hopeful hearts, we bring our needs to God, whose love is stronger than death and who nourishes us with the bread of life. For the church, may God continue to bless our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our bishops, priests, and lay leaders with all that they need to guide us in ways that bring God's love to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For state and federal leaders, may the grace of the Holy Spirit empower them in their efforts to protect all life from conception to natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the eradication of all forms of racism among all peoples, that all violence in our cities will cease, and that all will open wide their hearts with the love of God and neighbor, so that healing and peace will mark our way of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those experiencing loneliness, anxiety, or stress, especially those who are affected by the coronavirus pandemic, may they rest in the confidence that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those contemplating a call to the priesthood and religious life, especially from within our St. Francis Cabrini Parish community, may they be blessed with clarity of thought and respond with courage and generosity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For police officers, may they be respected and may they, along with firefighters, first responders, military personnel, and those on the front line of the coronavirus pandemic, be protected from harm as they strive to serve others and for all veterans who have served our country and thus maintained our freedom as a nation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick of our community and all those who requested our prayers, including those reflected in the white intercessory book, may they be comforted by the caregiving and compassion of others. We especially pray for Gavin Armstrong, Ellie Caruso, Fran Gallagher, Jane Galloway, Mark Gravante, John Harrigan, Dorothy Harris, Tom Holden, Nikki Lanza, Jean Lutz, Connor Scott Mall, Dave Moore, Deborah Morris, Danica Mulholland, Logan Nicole, Clara Pesci, Joe Redziunas, Barry Temple, Harry Weiler, and Helen Yeager. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they rest in God's eternal love as we especially pray for Father James Bukaria, Sandra Getz, Morgan McCaffrey, and all those who have died as a result of violence and the coronavirus pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we bring you these needs today, confident in the power of your love and the abundance of your generosity. We offer all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mystery of this world, and come to share the divinity. Brothers, up to 
spirit. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you for the divine. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and his assistant bishops, and all those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, 
Cosmos and Damien and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you've chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you've given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours 
forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Those who were in the dark are thankful for the sunlight. We who live, we who die are grateful for his gift. Thankful for his love. Of the wheat, of the wine, united with his word, and the love we share, behold, behold the Lamb of God, all who eat, all who drink shall live. at this table. Bless our lives, nourish all who hunger for this feast. Shelter them with peace. Behold, behold the Lamb of God. All who one be our shield make still the winds that blow cradle us with love behold behold the lamb of god all who eat all who drink shall live Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, 
and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, Michael, the Archangel, defend, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.